guys, it is Tristan with Nerdot's Newsstand, and it is time again for our top books of the week. We are going to talk about the top five books. I have one honorable mention, and I have one terrible, absolutely, I don't know what I read book that will be towards the end. Now, I am going to go ahead and include two DC books in one. War of World 3 did start this week, and it includes War of World 3 number one. And the Suicide Squad title. I combine those two. I think it's a little bit fair here. Both are really good and you'll see them on my list. But because they are on the same storyline, I'm going to combine those. And it was a way of sneaking six into my top five. Let's be real here. So if you enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit like. I make content every single day. Hit subscribe. Hit, I said that backwards, didn't I? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your top books are of the week. And let's start right off with an honorable mention. And I have Noctera number eight by Scott Snyder and art by Tony Daniels. This book every single week is, or every single time it's out, is very, very good. This week, it kind of felt like the turn that everyone expected. And now I won't give it away, but I saw it coming a mile away. We got, oh my God, this guy is bad. Uh, but now we're going after him. It was a very, very odd heel turn for me. But we'll have to wait and see how it goes. It's kind of using the trope, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And I'm curious to see. I've really enjoyed this book thus far. I do think it is one of the better books that we are getting on the indie scene. So it's definitely worth checking out. But yes. It only made it into honorable mention. Now, let's start right off with my top five. And this is the book I was talking about, War for World 3. And it is part one, and then part two is actually Suicide Squad. And it is so good. It is by Robbie Thompson and Dennis Hopeless. The artist by Dexter Soy and Eduardo Plancia. Oh my goodness, this is straight up action insanity. I think I love Superwoman. I do. She's so manipulative, she's so crazy, she's so fun, and she, like, looks at Owlman like he's a toy. Like, she looks at Owlman like, I don't, I don't think any normal person thinks this way, and that's why I think it's so good, because she's straight up evil. She's doing everything in her right mind to manipulate Ultraman to make him just absolutely insane, and I think we're gonna see the apex of that insanity pretty so soon, but... I've been champion Suicide Squad for a long time. I would like to see Robbie Thompson stick around and get some more work with DC. Every single week, his work with Ambush Bug is some of the best. I absolutely love it. Even in this one, they're singing and they have to redact the song lyrics because, you know, Warner Media took their money. <laughs> I love it. You have to deal with them anyways way too much. So I really, really enjoyed this. I'm glad to see where it's going. I was at first when these mini events were announced. I was like, oh, God, we got Trial of the Amazons. We got War for World 3. We got Shadow War. We got Shadow of the Bat. We got this. And I'm like, OK, I kind of like the mini events. I'm kind of digging them. Five issues in and out. Yeah, I really do. I'm enjoying them. So this was great. Both issues were great. I love Dexter Soy. Definitely worth a read. So for number four, I have Arkham City, Order of the World number six by Dan Waters, and the art is by Danny. This is the final issue of this, and the, the, the ending was so cute. So, obviously, I'm going to give a little bit of spoilers with this one because it's the last issue, but we actually see what happens at Pig's Ark, at Professor Pig's Arkham Asylum, and he does a really good job of keeping everybody in tune until Azrael is let out of his cage, and I'm still confused if you guys know, let me know in the comments below. Did everybody die or were they just chained up and they're going back to Arkham? Because, like, I don't know. I don't know. But even so, we have Jocasta Joy, who is the doctor who's been trying to keep these people sane, for lack of a better word. She actually takes a bullet for Ten-Eyed Man. And we see Ten-Eyed Man at the end just dancing around. Please don't. Don't lose Ten-Eyed Man. Bring him into the main line. He's so fun. He's so good. And he's like so I, weirdly charismatic the way he talks everything. Do not let this character go. D give Dan Waters a, a title with this character front and center. I will be the first one in line to buy it. I really, really enjoyed this mini as a whole. 
It was great. Really, really good from beginning to end. And the art by Danny is so unique. I really enjoyed it. So for number three, I have Batman Killing Time. And it is done by Tom King. And it is, uh, the artist is David Marquez. For one, this is beautiful book. Like the coloring combined with David Marquez art on some of the panels of Killer Croc are phenomenal. And the way that we uh, Tom King uses monologues um, in order to explain what's going on, this was a true detective story, and it was so good. I know, I know I have a lot of people in my audience that don't necessarily care for Tom King. This is Tom King at his peak Batman. He said he was the, done with the deconstruction, and he meant it, and he nailed it out of the park. I cannot wait to see where this goes. Six issues, he can, he can do it. And his other work going on right now has been good. Superwoman, or Supergirl just wrapped up. And then we also have... Um, Human Target, right? Which I've heard a lot of good things about. I read the first two issues I really enjoyed, but I'm waiting for the trade. So, you know what? Maybe Tom King is over that phase in his life and he's really hitting it um, out of the park like he did with Martian or uh, Mr. Miracle and Vision and all that. So, really, really good title. Number two, I have Dark Knights of Steel, number five. The art is by Yasmin Purdy and it is written by Tom Taylor. I love, love, love this book. Now, for one, what they do to Ivy and Harley was very, very interesting. It was definitely a different kind of idea. Like, Ivy is more obsessed and infatuated with Harley, begging her to stay, begging her to stay. And Harley's just like, I'm going to go now. Yeah, I'm done. I really, really like that. I, but what got me so much in this book was the twist we got initially with the family coming to Earth. And then we saw a twist with Bruce being the son of the elves, well, of uh, the father. And now, after Jackass Kent, I don't know if Clark is um, really evil or if we have a shapeshifter going on here, but whatever happened, um, he stabbed him, and now we've got the Kents raising, in essence, you know, uh, Bruce here. So I really enjoyed this title. It's definitely flipping everything that you know on its head, and it's doing it in a very well-versed way. I love this book. Every single week, it has made my top picks of the week. It has been out. So for number one, it's got to be Crossover. Crossover number 12 by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw. This whole series, I'll say it once and I'll say it a thousand times, is a love letter to comic book fans. This was a series by a comic book fan for somebody that's read for years. And this just cemented that. And we actually see Negan meet Robert Kirkman. But what I was confused about, let me know in the comments below if you guys know, because I don't know. From my understanding, if you killed the creator, all of their subsequent creations were gone. But obviously that doesn't happen because of what happens with Negan. And now we're getting this whole like, kind of apex of everything going on or climax uh, and it's so good <laughs> this book if i know a lot of people have all come into my comments and said one thing or another about this book was made for netflix and da, da, da. no this book was made for fans there's no way this is going to be made into anything but an omnibus there's no way this a book is going to make any sort of screen because it was made, it, the entire time this book has been around, it has been exactly what it needed to be. It has been exactly what it set out to be. And that's what makes this book so good. And then in the, we've had, you know, Alan Moore version of Donny Cates this entire time. And he comes back and he's, and he looks like Donny Cates. You know, he's shaved and he's got blonde hair. I love it. I love the way he does this. Keep up the fucking amazing work. I will keep buying this book. I love it. I can't say enough good. He even has a little line about bleeding cool in there. Oh, my God. It's so good. So for my worst of the week, ha ha, I actually remembered. <laughs> I have strange number one. Okay. So I've talked a lot of shit about Jed McKay. Not bad. Okay. That was the wrong way to say that. Talked a lot of good about Jed McKay. Actually, his Moon Knight didn't make it in this week. Not because it was bad, just because it wasn't as good as the others. But um, and I was like, yeah, Jed McKay is so good. I really like his Marvel work. Da, 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 da. What was this? What was this? Like, Cleo is Sorceress Supreme. 
Get it? Get it? I'm going to tell you again. She's Sorcerer Supreme. Did you know that? I just, I, I think in, what, 23 pages? She probably said that five times. She has an altercation with Dr. Doom. There, It is a key. So if you're an investor, it is a key. But I don't know what this book was supposed to be. Whatever it was supposed to be, it wasn't. Because it was not well. The dialogue to me, I think, is what was so irritating. Like, I get sometimes I talk in circles or in riddles and are backwards, but I'm not a comic book character on a page. It should make sense what they say. And I just felt like I had to read them more, you know, than two or three times because I'm like, what is this book? What am I reading here? I will never read this again and I will never pick up another one. Bring back Dr. Strange because if this is how his wife or ex-wife or not current wife or whatever she is, if this is how she is, I don't like her. I don't. I absolutely don't. So that is the worst of the week. I still have a lot of respect for Jed McKay. The art by Marcel Zaria was okay. It wasn't bad. I felt like there were some issues maybe with the inking. I don't know. It, it just it just didn't land for me. I would be curious if it landed for any of you guys. You have to let me know down below. But let me know, of course, your top books, and I will see you in the next one.